Chapter 737, Lord of a Majestic Clan. However, Zhang Chen wasn't easily fooled. It was easy to claim loyalty, but it wasn't that easy to actually feel loyalty. Everyone, I have no way of knowing how sincere you are, so I'm just going to ask one question. Do you want me to use restrictions in your consciousness to restrict you until the day you are freed? Or do you want to take the initiative and swear to the heavens that you'll serve me loyally? I'm not a greedy person. A mere twenty years is all I ask. Everyone was overjoyed when they heard Zhang Chen's choice. Meng Red Air hastily asked, Young master, will you truly unlock the restriction in our consciousness if we swear to the heavens? Everyone else were staring at Zhang Chen in surprise too. They obviously hadn't expected to be given such a pleasant choice. Both choices were restrictions of a sort, but the heavens oath was far less strict than a restriction in one's consciousness. But the difference between the two restrictions were obvious. It was true that a heavens oath was extremely strong, but there wouldn't be any consequences as long as they didn't willingly go against their oath. However, a restriction in one's consciousness was different. Such a restriction meant that their lives were completely in the other party's hands. Even if they were to obey Zhang Chen's every whim, he could still kill them with a single thought if he felt like it. It was the same as a lit candle in the wilderness. The tiniest wind could threaten the flame. But if the candle was put inside a house, it wouldn't be extinguished as long as they didn't act stupid and blow it out themselves. That depends on your performance, Zhang Chen smiled calmly. He wasn't an easy person to bargain with. He was simply giving them a buy of a care so they would remain hopeful for the future. With this rule in place, it would be odd if they didn't work hard for him. The time limit on your restriction depends on your behavior and your performance, but you still have to swear a heaven's oath before I unlock your restrictions. After all, there are plenty of ungrateful people in this world, and I cannot say for sure if no such person exists among you. I may have saved your lives, but that won't stop some of you from consciously ignoring the debt and focusing on the fact that I'm going to order you around for 20 years. That's unacceptable. That's absolutely unacceptable. Menredair shook his head repeatedly. It is only natural to repay one's debt. Anyone who doesn't do that is the worst of ingrates. Yes, yes. We are all willing to serve you from the bottom of our hearts. Being your subordinate for 20 years is 100 times better than serving as someone else's slave forever. We all know that very well. Their words were pretty, but it didn't deter Zhang Chen's decision in the least. He smiled and waved his hands. Actions speak louder than words. Oh right, please tell me who you guys are. As I've said earlier, I like honesty and detest half-heartedness. The ten began to introduce themselves to him. As he thought, a large majority of these former slaves were wandering cultivators. Seven out of ten of them were generic cultivators coming from all sorts of regions some middle and some lower. Strictly speaking, the remaining three didn't count as wandering cultivators, but rather as sex disciples. One of them had suffered the same fate as the Regal Pill Palace and had been sold as a slave after being captured when his sect was destroyed. As for the remaining two, one of them had been baited into a trap while he was journeying, whereas the other guy was an even unluckier person who'd been traded as a bargaining chip after his sect had participated in a gamble and lost. Zhang Chen couldn't help aside the size of the world and its innumerable strangeness as he listened to their odd experiences. However, their background and identity gave Zhang Chen a little peace of mind. At the very least, none of these ten people seemed to have extraordinarily powerful backgrounds. The size of a person's background often determined the amount of their arrogance. It would be much easier to order them around if he didn't need to account for backlash. Of course, intimidation was also an important part of control. Zhang Chen understood that the stick alone wouldn't be enough to control these people. He must also offer them the carrot and make them genuinely acknowledge him. If they felt like they had found a home with him, they might not even be willing to leave even if he told them to get lost. Dot. The Majestic Clan was one of the 28 great clans in Valer Yom capital. They were the highest ranking existence in Valer Yom capital, second only to the seven emperors. Since the seven emperors often secluded themselves from the world and abstained from personally participating in the management of Valer Yom capital, the 28 clans were actually the true holders of power in Valer Yom capital. Any one of these clans could summon the wind and the rain in the capital. Currently, the majestic clan lord was secretly meeting a mysterious guest in his residence. There were only four men inside the secret room. The clan lord was seated at the master's seat. A casually dressed bill master was standing beside him. In the guest's seat was an eighth level emperor realm cultivator. He wore flowing white robes and appeared unusually humble before the clan lord. He too had a pill master standing just beside him. Clan lord, I can confirm that this pill is of good quality. I do believe that it's the longevity pill. The pill master next to the clan lord inspected the pill for a moment and put it back on the table before making his report. The clan lord nodded slightly without batting an eyelid. Then, he looked at the guest sitting at the opposite side. Brother, this is indeed a very good pill. I can see that the eternal celestial capital had reaped quite the profits from your invasion of the myriad domain. The clan lord smiled faintly. The man dressed in flowing white robes sitting on the opposite side of the table was none other than a saint holy king of the eternal celestial capital. He had arrived at Valer Yom capital just that day to personally promote the longevity pill and open up retail channels in Valer Yom capital. The saint holy king looked very at ease even though the other party had brought up the subject of the myriad domain. Clan Lord, I can guarantee that this longevity pill will accomplish impressive sales figures once released into the open market. However, Valer Yom capital has always stood alone, and we of eternal celestial capital dare not push our own businesses in. That is why I have come to Valer Yom Capital to inquire about the possibility of opening up a trade route. Of course, the first group to pop into my mind was none other than the Majestic Clan. Hehe. <laughs> and are you planning to ask my clan to open the way for you? The clan lord asked indifferently. Merely opening up the channels of trade isn't sustainable for a long period of time. 
I am here today with the eternal celestial capitals of most sincerity with me. Even sharing our profits is possible. If you support us, clan lord, then we are willing to let you manage the market in Valeryom capital on our behalf. The clan lord's mask slipped just a little when he heard this. A gleam appeared in his eyes as he stared intently at Holy Kink, obviously trying to peer into the latter's heart and figure out his true intentions. It was obvious that the clan lord couldn't quite believe that a free meal would drop from the sky and hit him on the head like this. The longevity pill was such an extraordinary pill. If his clan were to become the sole retailer in the Loyam capital, then they would basically monopolize the entire market. He could hardly imagine the sheer amount of profit they would rake in. The majestic clan might be wealthy and rich, but whoever would begrudge having more money. Plus, this longevity pill was a breakthrough in the history of pill making. If this pill could be mass produced, then the profits it would bring were unimaginable. Even as a retailer, the profits they could earn would still be massive. Brother, forgive me for being direct, but why would such a good offer land in my lap? The clan lord was ultimately a man of great importance. He found it entirely beneath him to beat around the bush. Honored clan lord, I understand that this offer may come as a bit of a surprise. However, there is a reason behind our offer. Holy King wasn't in a hurry to seal the deal. The bait had been dangled, and it was now time to haggle. Firstly, I don't know many important figures in Valeryom capital. In fact, I am most familiar with you, my lord. Secondly, we are planning to open a trading channel in Valeryom capital, and you are without one of the best choices we have in terms of network and connections. The clan lord chuckled, I won't deny this, but being the best choice and the only choice are two different things, no? There must be another reason right, a lay brother. My lord is wise. Our final reason is because we wish to bore your network and status in Valeryom capital for a bit. What do you mean? The clan lord asked indifferently. Free gifts could always be turned down, and he would see what his gifter requested from him before he made a decision. You and everyone else may be aware of this, but while we have eliminated the regal pill palace, some of them have managed to escape our grasp. These people are an enormous hidden threat if they are not eliminated completely. Among these people, there is even one who holds an irreconcilable grudge with us. This man even went so far as to kill one of our holy kings. You're speaking of the young man you were pursuing. What is his name again? The clan lord had vaguely heard of this. It was just that he didn't pay too much attention to it. After all, this was all minor news for someone at his level. His name is Zhang Chen, and he's an extraordinarily cunning person. In fact, we suspect he has already infiltrated Valeryom capital. If that is the case, then our investigation attempts will be greatly obstructed since Valeryom capital is not a place where we can chase him down at will. If we give him time to grow powerful, he will inevitably become a huge threat to the eternal celestial capital. That is why, I have come today for two reasons. One, to promote the longevity pill and two, to obtain a minimal right to arrest in Valeryom capital. Naturally, it would be best if our arrest is supported by the heads of Valeryom capital, and you are the best choice I can think of, my lord. Holy Kink was quite gifted in eloquence. He wove half-truths through his words and spoke as if with great sincerity. He didn't speak in a secretive manner and even snuck in some flattery while explaining his reasons. As expected, Clan Lord Wang Ting pondered for a moment before raising an eyebrow. Is that all? Yes. Hunting down the remnants of the Regal Pill Palace is our only wish. Saint Holy King nodded without hesitation. Of course, there was no way he was going to explain his reasons any further. The Clan Lord nodded slightly, but gave a non-committal response. Holy King was rather experienced in the art of a deal. Now that all the demands had been aired, it was time to talk about splitting the profits. After all, how could he convince the other party to accept his wishes delightedly if he wasn't willing to offer them a nice, juicy carrot? Our master has personally given his word that anyone who can help the eternal celestial capital in solving this problem would be given the retail rights of the longevity pill in Valeryom capital. We are willing to bear all the costs and give the retailer 20% of our profits. 20%. It might not sound a lot, but it was almost sheer profit for the retailer. They didn't need to bear any costs at all, other than the establishment of shops and the costs associated with the employees. This meant that they would be gaining this 20% for almost nothing. After all, the cost and fees necessary to sustain the shops were nearly negligible compared to the longevity pill's priceless value. Moreover, this pill was one of a kind product, and thus was ripe for a monopoly. In fact, the retailer didn't even need to open a shop for this type of business to flourish. They only needed to sit at their homes and wait for the orders to come in. Their buyers would come present themselves and beg for a sale. This was the benefit of a monopoly. To be honest, even 10% profits to a retailer was a shocking sum already in this kind of business, much less 20.